Welcome to our lecture online. So here let's take another look at the reduced mass but in the concept of how does the reduced mass change when we make the relative size of the large object and the small object extreme down all the way to where they're equal in size. Well let's take a look at the first example where we have a very large large object, a very tiny small object. What is the reduced mass in that case? Well it turns out when we have a situation like that, the barycenter is actually very close to where the center mass of the large object is. And if that's the case, we see that the, the reduced mass can be written as the product over the sum that will never change. But notice that m plus m is essentially the same as m, since m is much, much larger than small m. And then you can see that the m's cancel out, and the reduced mass essentially becomes equal to the mass of the small object. In other words, if we have a situation where the large object is so large and the small object comparatively so small that the bare center happens to be right there and then we again go to our normal situation where we don't need to reduce mass and that's why the reduced mass is actually the same as the mass of the small object. But if we go in the other extreme, if we make both of them the same size such as a large mass equals to small mass, what does the reduced mass become then? Well, notice that the bare center now moves exactly to the middle between the two objects and that the distance from the large ob object to the bare center is going to be the same as the distance from the small object to the bare center because essentially the small object and the large object are now the same mass. And then if we calculate the reduced mass, notice that we can now replace large m by small m since they're equal anyway then we can see we get m squared over 2m or the reduced mass becomes equal to one half the mass of the small object. So in other words, in order to get the F equals MA equation to work out and the force of gravity to be equal to the mass times acceleration, notice for that we have to replace the, the small mass by the reduced mass which is now one half the small mass and the same for the large mass since it's the same. For now we would need to use the reduced mass for both of them depending upon which object we want to look at for its motion and the equations associated with that object. So essentially, the limits of what the reduced mass can be, it can be equal to the small mass on the one case where the large mass is enormous compared to the small mass, and in the other case where the two masses are the same, then the reduced mass becomes half the mass of the object. And that is how we understand just a little bit more about the concept of the reduced mass. Oh, I'm sure there's plenty of examples like that. We have two stars that are roughly the same size that revolve around the point in the middle of between the two. Yeah. What will happen if there's planets in between the stars? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, depending upon where the planets are relative to the stars, they can, they can be in quite some interesting orbits. Yeah, yeah. there definitely will not be smooth circular or elliptical yeah. orbits. They'll probably go all different directions. Maybe go from one star to the next? Will the planet one star somehow jump the other one? Wow, that's a good question. I've seen illustrations of what the orbits look like. They look quite erratic. I never really looked close enough to see if they could kind of go from one star to the other. Um, I, it, it's kind of like a wild figure eight, and sometimes it'll be very close to the star, sometimes it'll be far away from the star. Yeah, you see some very wild object. I mean, the orbit that way. But um, that would be another topic, wouldn't it? What would the, the the orbit of a planet B when they have two or three stars in the solar system and they all pull on the planet, it would be interesting. But planet just go. Oh, sometimes they'll just collide with the star, who knows? No, no, the planet just shattered because it's pulled by two different stars. No, I wouldn't expect the planet to shatter. That's not a usual thing. The force of gravity is strong enough to keep it together. <laughs>